What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to do something fun and interesting. And I will leave the information on this location in the description of this video. This is going to be an underground cave tour, which is gonna be very cool and educational. So without further ado, let's jump in and check this out. Okay, so here's Penn's cave house. Parking is off to the right. And then you walk behind the house back to the left. That's where the visitor station is where you can get your tickets to go on the tours. And they also have a wildlife tour here as well. So there are multiple tours you could do here besides just the underground cave. And the views are beautiful out here. Right below here is where they actually bring power into the cave. Pretty cool. Have a little mining display here. Great for the kids, a lot of fun, a lot of education. Let's head inside. Inside, you can see you'll have a nice little cafe, souvenir shop, plenty of tables set up to eat. Very nice place. Closing in the back. This is where you would buy your tickets. way down to Penn's Cave. My name is Angelo. I'll be giving you a tour through the cave today. Before we get started, a couple of rules about being on the boat. And the first one is to make sure you stay seated the entire time. Fair you don't want to be standing up moving around because if you're standing up, you are more likely to fall in. Mm. We've been giving tours down here since 1885, 136 years. No one's fallen in yet. Let's oh. keep it that way. <laughs> also, when you, step, when you start moving around the boat, it does make the boat rock. It makes people very uncomfortable. This boat has a flat bottom, so it will not tip over. However, if you do make it rock, it will make people uncomfortable. So if you would, please just stay where you are. Mm. Also, keeping everything on the inside of the boat is a good idea because if we bump into the walls, I don't want anybody's fingers in the way. Walls made out of planet Earth, you know that thing we live on, and this boat's got about 20 people in it. It's pretty heavy after a while. You don't want to get your hands caught between the boat and the rock. It's very uncomfortable. Also, last but not least, please don't touch anything inside the cave. Rocks, walls, and formations are all off limits. Oils in your hands will stop the formations from growing. It's a live and growing cave. It's been doing that for about 5 million years, and we'd like it to stay that way as it would be naturally. Before we head inside the cave, does anybody have any questions? Can we use flash photography? Sure. Okay. So sometimes it doesn't really work out well for you. Okay. <laughs> it just depends. It's just if it's a little foggy in there, it'll come back at you, and right. then people think you find ghosts, and then I'll have ghost hunters back down here, and it's just it's a whole thing. Back down here? <laughs> back, yes, they uh, were awful. Oh my. <laughs> yes, I'm in a cave. Every oh, so no. often you would, they would go, I felt a breeze. I'm like, yeah, we're in a cave. <laughs> 
Over here underneath this rock face, that's where all the water comes in. Approximately around 11 million gallons of water comes in through here every single day. There's an underground spring here. It drains an area about 10 square miles from the surface and pulls it all down to one location. Once it gets into the cave, it erodes away at the, at the bottom, back here at the dock. It flights about 15 feet over there. Once we get inside, though, it's only about three or four feet deep, so if you do fall in, just stand back up. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll get you back in the boat. i got a little towel here for you to dry off with. We'll never speak of it again. <laughs> Mommy, yeah. For the most part, when it rains, water kind of go up. Just a drought, water goes down. Most of the formations you're going to see in here today are on the ceiling. They're called stalactites. Stalactites hold tight to the ceiling, pointing downward towards the floor. Opposite of stalactites are stalagmites. Stalagmites are on the floor and they might reach the ceiling someday. <laughs> so, the easiest way to remember them stalactites hold tight, stalagmites might reach the ceiling. And when you put them together, you get a column formation. That's what you call them. Over here we have our largest stalagmite, 13 feet tall, we call it the Statue of Liberty. And all that kind of looks like it. In your imagination, you can see just about anything in this cave. We'll see quite a bit today. No, it helps if you turn the lights on. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about what the cave is made of, how it got here, a few odds and ends of information just to get started with being inside the cave here. So to start, most of the cave is made out of gray stone along the walls here. This stone is called limestone. Limestone is a, a very common rock around the area. It's a sedimentary rock, and that just means it's made from layers upon layers of sediment, all stacked on top of each other. These layers of sediment were deposited on the bottom of an ocean around 450 to 500 million years ago. This stuff is pretty old. It's from the Ordovician period. These layers of sediment, things like that clay, were deposited on the bottom of the ocean. Over time, those layers would build up and solidify together to create the limestone. That's how most sedimentary rocks are made, not always underneath an ocean, but a lot of times they are. After the cave is formed, we have the white stuff starts showing up. This is called calcium carbonate, better known as calcite. Not shock, seashells, and the active ingredient, most of the acids. So we also need the heartburn, so let the walls. The brown stuff over here is iron oxide. Iron is sunk through walls and has rusted due to the oxygen inside the cave. And a little bit of green, green moss and algae that's made with growth because they are artificial plants. Lights of energy, energy is then used by plants for photosynthesis. Hmm. So you do see a little bit of growth inside the cave because of those electric lights. They basically do give off energy and then they're absorbed by those plants. However, we're not growing anything like grass and trees down here. We're just growing the most basic forms. Algae, mosses, lichens, things like that. But you will see a little bit of growth inside the cave because, you know, life finds a way. That's pretty much what the cave is going to be made of. If you see anything else and you're not sure what the heck it is, you can always ask me. That's kind of why I'm here. I also dry it up and I help answer questions. Now, the age of the cave is estimated, but it's anywhere from three to five million years old. Water came through these big holes and ceiling right up here. Mix to go a little bit of carbon dioxide, pretty what we call a carbonic acid. It's an acidic groundwater that dissolves in the walls of our cave, opening up this entire cavity you're sitting in right now. As it eats away at the walls, it goes all the way back to where the tank <coughs> is, opens up the underground spring, all the water starts flowing in. Well, here we are in a boat. As long as you know the cave to be here, it's had water in it. There's been no time it's been a drier walking cave. Now, whatever this doesn't stop people from looking at me and saying, but about 40 years ago, I walked through this cave. I said, I don't think you did. I think you might have us confused with a different cave. Or they're a lot older than they say they are, but only one of those is more likely. Because <laughs> we've, we've been given boat tours for 136 years since 1885, and when we discovered the cave in 1795, it had water in it. Basically, so it's like an underground stream. Has every inch of the cave been gone through? Yep, we've explored the entirety of the cave. Actually had two mapping missions, one in the 70s and one in the 90s. Okay. All right, these couple formations here we do like to point out. These are just for fun, like our Statue of Liberty. Though the Statue of Liberty right now, it looks like we're leaving the town of Pisa. <laughs> <laughs> Using your imagination, we can see anything in this cave. And we're gonna see some fun stuff. Right up here, that damn gentleman, that's the Pope. I can't tell you which Pope it is. Over to the left, we have the gentleman in the U.S. Capitol building, just the top of it. <laughs> Little Congress is right next to it. <laughs> and down here, we have the USS Enterprise for Star Trek. Yes. In front of us, we have the Garden of God, sitting in some of the Garden of God. 
was in Colorado Springs. If you've been to Colorado Springs, you might have an idea what I'm talking about. If you've never been there, that's okay. I haven't been there either, so we're in the same boat on that one. <laughs> Jokes just get worse, so don't be excited. <laughs> 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 You're stuck out here with me for an hour, so. I'll tell you as many bad jokes as one. <laughs> now, you might have already got dripped on today. <coughs> it happens. Those drips are chock full of minerals. Those drips allow the formation to grow. How the formations grow is as the water comes down through the surface of the earth, it picks up minerals. Those minerals are things like calcium. As the water comes down through the surface of the earth and sits on the edge of the lactates, the minerals start gathering there on the end. As it drips off, there's a chemical reaction that occurs that causes them to bond to the rock, turning from diluted, uh, dissolved, and amorphous calcite into crystalline calcite, which makes formations. And that whole process takes about 120 years for one inch. It takes a long time. It's slow. It's not fast. So, if you would please, don't touch anything inside the cave. Because that process is already slow to begin with, being that these formations have grown from, for hundreds, if not thousands of years, if I was to reach out with my finger and touch the formation, it will actually stop that formation from growing. The oil on my hands will be left behind, and that would cause the formation not to be able to let any minerals bond to them. There's a barrier there with the oil, and it stops them from being able to grow. Basically, think about how uh, oil and water don't mix. So basically what happened here, we got water coming out of this hole in the wall here, trickling down the side, the minerals do bond, causing a formation which should grow here. This is called a glowstone. Glowstones are made from water washing the side of rock, mineral bonds, and create a rippling, rippling light formation growing out towards you. We have a flowstone. It looks a lot like a waterfall, and that's what they become. Flowstones are waterfall like formations upon the side of the wall and resemble waterfalls like this one here. They're really nice. We'll see a lot of them throughout the cave, and we'll get closer to that one when we go through the next part of the cave. Next part of the cave is actually the hole in the wall over here. Oh, there. And don't worry, the boat fits through there. <laughs> it might not look like it, but it does. It'd be pretty bad if we didn't fit through the cave because this would be as far as we can go. Then we'd have to head back, and I think you'd be very upset with me. <laughs> a formation I do have to point out, we're right over here, we have a turkey. There's his head, body and tail. Next to the turkey is a jellyfish. Jellyfish is only on the like a peanut butter, right? Not sure where you found that. Up here on top of this cliff, if you're feeling extra patriotic today, we have a bald eagle. And he's holding on to a little drumstick. <laughs> Every so often I'll have an old gentleman on the boat and then uh, his wife will look at him and go, Hey, that's you. <laughs> hey, that's you. I know. That was a lot, actually. Yeah, that was so We're going to go through this hole in the wall over here. As we do so, it is going to get kind of narrow. Do watch your hands. Make sure they're on the inside of the boat. You don't want them on the outside. It's like getting your hand caught in cargo, of course. Also, watch your head on this rock over here. Here on the left side. Yeah. It's basically leading to the boat. You're going to get cut off the rock. Just not only at the same time. Yeah, just leaning forward. Just don't get your head off that rock. Before we're far enough away, you guys really have to look about I don't have to lean, I'm short. It's not often I drive correctly. It's interesting. Alright. Entering this part of the cave over here, you can see a lot of rocks along the floor. All these rocks over here, once we're part of the city. What happened was water came through cracks in the ceiling, and up here, they froze and expanded during the last major ice age. The last major ice age was actually our, one of the shortest ones we've seen in Earth's history. Uh, some, some of them actually lasted about 10 years, you know, that didn't think it was happening. There he goes. Oh, nice. Don't worry, he won't bother you. He's trying to get a little grumpy at some lights on him. He's not really supposed to be in here. Oh! So over here we got a lot of rocks. Well, the last ice age started about 100,000 years ago, and then ended about 10,000 years ago. So everything started freezing. When the water froze and expanded in the ceiling, it caused the rocks then to come loose. Because when water freezes, it expands into ice, causing some of the layers to shift and be broken. That's what these layers of rock are here. After a while, of course, everything thawed out and everything fell down. 
Once everything fell down, everything turned back into water, everything, all the calcite tried to bond at the same time. And that caused everything to be clogged up in the zeolite. Not a whole lot of formations can grow because of that, so we don't see too many of these here. You know, you've got a lot of flat water. <coughs> it comes up, this one over here looks like a lion's head. Look at the fence in the lion's head, you are approximately the fence in. And on the left, we have Buddha. <laughs> now, Buddha has accumulated several other names over the past, as it looks like the Egyptian Spins, the Buddha from Taylor, John of Star Wars, State Ball Marshall Man, the Michelin Tiger Man, my little friend, the Teacher of the Rock, and the Gorilla. You get the idea. Up uh, behind our lion's head, there's a small tunnel up there. If you were to crawl the way up there, you would find yourself in the tunnel, and below the surface of the earth, right next to the parking lot. And the parking lot's up there as well. That's where the cave was first discovered from, and you probably went right by, right by that entrance today and didn't even notice it. Mm -hmm. Which is fine, because it's kind of hidden anyway. If you want to go find where that is, you absolutely can. Go back, going back up to the parking lot, which I'm assuming you will at some point today, if you want to go home. In the parking lot, there is a sewing machine. Behind it, there's a brass dip in the elevation. Um, this basically follows the electric line that goes down towards that corner, uh, to the left corner of it, and that's where that time left. That's how the electricity gets in. Being said, don't mess with it. We need electricity out here. Uh, behind this grid, this is actually the cave is coming from back in 1795. A man by the name of James Martin came down through here and he found the cave. Wouldn't be until about 1860 they discovered the entrance we came through, and then in 1885 we started doing tours. Now, right back up here, when James Martin discovered the cave, he said he found Native American artifacts, pottery shards, beads, arrowheads, mountain lions, skeletons, and a fire pit. Natives and animals would come down here during large winter storms because, hey, if it's freezing cold outside, they'd rather be in here because down here during the winter time it is 52 degrees. Yeah. Also, right now it's 52 degrees. You want to guess what tomorrow's going to be? 52 degrees. It stays that way all year round. You see, the internal cave temperature is the outside temperature over the entire year, all averaged together. So here it's always going to be about 52. Even from year to year, it won't change much, if at all, because once you have an established average, it becomes very difficult to change. Okay. Any questions before we head out deeper into the cave? Mm -hmm. How far are we underground? About 45 feet. Okay, so that's not so bad. Yeah, that's actually a, a pretty good amount, so you don't have to worry about anything collapsing in on top of you. <laughs> um, the only time you really have to worry about cave-ins is if it's really thin. You would think it'd be the opposite. you think, oh, if there's more rock above me, it would be more of a, a concern. Okay. It's actually the opposite. If there's less rock above you, things will collapse more easily. If it's a really, you know, large amount of rock, maybe like 100 feet underground, which is the deepest we'll get in this cave, that is actually the safest point in the cave because it's more structurally stable. I wish he'd been with his ruby falls. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talks that way. All right, where's the thingy then? Which is still growing. Let's watch head on that low hanging part. The central cavity in the middle of those where most of the sound occurred break from. Those flat edges on the side there are from breakage. Anytime you see a flat edge on a rock or anything like that, you see something broke.
right now we're entering the lowest part of the cave from this area for the service of the earth. You're now 100 feet underground. Or right now you're beneath the bison pasture. They're right across the street from where you parked. Watch out for the drips. You're under the bison. <laughs> and if you folks want to, I can turn off all the lights and let you guys see how dark it does get. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, just a couple things. One, uh, if you have a phone or a camera out that's going to be emitting any light, make sure it's clipped off and clipped. Because you kind of forget where everything is. Like, you kind of have an idea where the person is next to you, but when you turn all the lights off like that, you don't really know. You're always, like, kind of grasping for things. Back in the day, in we didn't have electricity down here. We didn't have electricity on the boats either. We had fire torches and oil lanterns. That's how we led our way through the caves. So, if you dropped your light in the water, you had a real trouble, didn't you? Over here, you got some soot. This soot here is for 40 years. You fire torches and oil lanterns on your way through the caves. Now from 1885 to 1929, that's all we have, that's what we use. In 1929, first electric lights were installed out in the park. Okay, we'll see where that is in a little bit. The reason why there's more so in this part of the cave is because there was nowhere for it to go. So basically, the front part of the cave we had the two entrances. The one we came in, the entrance of the cave, and the one by the park. <coughs> because of that, there's a lot of air that would allow, you know, smoke to go out, come and air to come in, so it ventilated. Back here, not so much. The smoke went up into the ceiling, kind of got cooled down, and settled on the rocks here. Because you know, high air rises, cool air goes to the bottom. Over here we have the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. Cool. Just the Canadian side. You can see a Canadian, you can see a Canadian over here going down the barrel. <laughs> and off the US side. <coughs> Never been in Niagara Falls, there you go. Over here we have a tail, body, flipper, neck and head of a dragon, Loch Ness Monster, or dinosaur. Oh yeah. You spend a lot of time down here. Yes I am. Over here we have some cave bacon. Cave bacon is a rock that looks like bacon, but it's a rock that like it. Oh, it's very low in cholesterol, very high in minerals. It doesn't sit in your stomach like a rock. It's pretty crunchy too. <laughs> Is that mist? Is yes. it misty in here? Mm -hmm. If it was dust, people would be sneezing a lot. But yes, it is constantly humid in here because you know water. And also, I'm sorry about your hair. up in 1927 to 
it's also known as uh, growing up with small children. Oh, yeah. Coming, maybe mm -hmm. with tomato. Speaking of tomatoes, yes. the place B is in a cave because uh, they can't get to you. Yeah. A lot of natural disasters don't bother you down here. You can't get struck by lightning in a cave. You're underground. Oh, my gosh. And you also can't get uh, hit by uh, earthquakes either. You would think that being underground or in earthquake would be a bad idea. As long as you're not on a major fault line, you won't have a problem. Places, so we'd always ask the question every morning. We're called them. So we'll have to see what we find. Now, this is a man made tunnel, yes, but we do have little formations growing on the ceiling. They're almost 100 years old. They grow so fast. What year did they make the hall? 1927 to 1929. So, two years of the whole project to make this tunnel and put the lake outside. Is that the Titanic? No, no ice birds. We'll be fine. Oh, this is... Oh, this is the Jurassic Park. It's like Jurassic Park. Oh, this There's a white deer up there. Yeah, that's one of our piebald deer. Uh, that is a, uh, his name's Theodore. He's, a, he's up there. He's the white one. Does it make you feel like you're watching Jurassic Park? Yeah. We grew up here. We grew up here. Hey, we're going to do it. All right, so since we swing in here, we're going to go through the small passageway right through here. As we do so, we are going to get pretty close to the walls. Uh, do watch your hands, make sure the inside of the boat. If you're on my side of the boat, there's going to be a rock sticking out called Headache Rock. If there's <laughs>
there I see that looks like lightning streaming across the ceiling. This cow side here will actually come to you make it at some point.
Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tour. If you wanna get more information, definitely go check out their website and I will leave that information in the description of this video. But again, it was a very fun educational tour very beautiful i've never seen anything like that in person so it was really really great to experience that in person but that's it so do me a favor like this video hit that thumbs up button if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can and do me a favor subscribe to the channel because it helps me out and i definitely appreciate it so that's it i just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you thank you i truly appreciate you all and as always see you in the next video